Aside from the four rotor, I don't think I've really ever had an engine this big in one of my cars, or at least for sure removed an engine that's this big from one of my cars. Typically all of my trucks, being Chevrolets, are pretty reliable. So this is a 2.0 liter Astron 80 Mitsubishi engine. So this car from the factory would have came with a 4G32, which is a 1.6 liter engine. This is the bigger one. I believe this is like a 4G52 or something like that. Commonly found, at least nowadays, in your average Mitsubishi forklift. The forklift engine is going to go back in the car. As far as engine upgrades, I honestly have no idea what's done to the inside of this engine, except that it sounds like it's got a three-quarter race cam, and it's got twin Mikuni Solex side draft carburetors on it. So these are a must for waking up one of these little four-cylinders. I've got a header to go on it with some pretty small pea shooter runners, and otherwise... For all I know, it could be a stock bottom end engine, which is probably my best bet. It does have like a Reman sticker on it somewhere. U.S. Supply Enterprises Remanufactured Engine. And I don't see a casting on the block for a 4G52 like my little 4G32 engine does over there. So, this engine has got to go in the car. Last video, we got the interior, the engine bay painted, the interior paint. It was a little cold here, so it's still drying. So I can't work on things in there. However, I need the engine installed so that I can work on the next steps of the car, which are even more safety things. Rally requires most FIA stuff nowadays, even track days, it's highly recommended. But they require a onboard fire suppression system in addition to two fire extinguishers that are accessible for the driver and co-driver. If you can imagine, you're on stage, you're three miles from the nearest person because it's a back road with no driveways, no intersections. It's a stage rally road, right? You're very remote. So when the car starts on fire, we jump out, pull the fire suppression nozzles, it goes off, we get our fire extinguishers and help fight the fire from the outside. The fire suppression nozzles, though, have to be located in specific points inside the vehicle. So what I'm also going to work on in this video, which is why the engine is going to get set in the car, is where those fire suppression nozzles go. There's going to be three of them in the engine bay. They need to spray on the engine from the back and both sides. And then two nozzles under the dash that spray right at the driver and right at the co-driver. Basically, kind of mid-chest down. You really don't want to get sprayed in the face with this stuff, but to help put the fire out on you when you're on fire as a driver. Engine is dropped in. This is your fire suppression nozzle right here. The yellow ones go in the engine bay. There's blue ones that go into the dash. The difference is in the nozzle spray pattern. So with the engine sitting in here and the heater core being where it is, I think I'm gonna end up putting the firewall nozzle I'm not really going to be able to get it centered and they don't want it above the engine so much as to just put it up here and run the line like through the cowl. As far as the side mount ones, I'm going to mount them up on the strut towers just like this. They want them midway down the center, around the strut tower, over to the firewall, across the firewall. Then I have a bulkhead fitting right here that's going to go somewhere like that, I think. I don't know, my white paint is still just a little tacky, so it's a little sticky in the engine bay. But you can see this engine, it's a big old engine. If there's a rotary in here, there'd be a ton more space. It'd be super sweet, but for now, got the big block 2 liter. And I've got a little block of wood holding it up. So with these center engine mounts here, with no transmission, the engine actually wants to pitch forward. So I guess, you know, center of gravity of the engine is actually in front of the axle, which is... Not quite ideal for off-road handling. You really want to push the engine back a little bit, try to get more weight on the rear, but we got enough fuel cell us towards the back. I think this car might have a pretty decent weight bias once we get done with it, but I'm going to make some little tabs to mount these side-mounted fire suppression nozzles and figure out a good way to mount the one in the back. The thing that's really inconvenient is the fire suppression bottle. It's small. Went with like a nicer... Lifeline 0360 fire suppression bottle versus some of the bigger ones on the market that are a little heavier. A little bit more pricey, but ultimately a nicer setup. So I was intending to put this bottle back here behind the seats. Now I can't set this down because my paint's still wet, but if you see how they sent this bottle 
with this swivel two outlet fitting on here is very inconvenient. It would have been nicer if it had a 90 degree fitting, just one line that I could run up to the front and then T and Y and go everything like that. But with the amount of hose, I don't know, 12 feet maybe, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough line to be able to run the bottle behind the seats and have to run two lines all the way up to the front. It's real inconvenient. I guess I should have read more into how much was included and ordered more line. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get more fire suppression line that quickly, but I have a solution. There is an empty space under Calvin's floor plate and I can put the bottle under Calvin's floor plate. The only thing that's hard about that is gauge on the bottle needs to be easily viewed by the people at tech inspection. So if you're right here looking down under there, you really can't see it. So I may drill like two holes, you know, some two inch holes, right? Some big holes in that floor plate, just kind of in the middle, make it symmetrical. Maybe we'll do three of them. The holes in the floor plate will let tech look through the floor plate in order to see that my fire suppression bottle is full of pressure. And I think under there is a much better spot for it. The only thing inconvenient about it is that the paint down there, because it's the bottom of the floor, it was a little cool overnight, it's still wet. It's kind of the running theme right now. I'm trying to do more work before my paint's dry. I'm gonna pull that floor plate out, build the spots for the nozzles, figure all of that out right now, and then mount the bottle and stuff. If it's right there, I'll have plenty of line. And I think I'm gonna run Maybe I'll run that nozzle up and mount it in the cowl. I don't know. I only have one of those bulkheads. I really don't want somebody to get too picky about just running it through the cowl metal without a bulkhead, even though it's technically like still in the car and I would silicone it shut, but I don't know. Bada bing, bada boom, look at that fire suppression system complete. So y'all saw me bend and make the one fire suppression line. They're all about the same. The fire suppression line material is like an aluminum tubing with a rubber coating on it. You can bend it super easy by hand. You know, Don't kink it. It's very easy to kink if you try to bend a very tight radius bend. But if you keep them like a solid, you know, three inch, maybe two inch radius, you'll be just fine. So I've got my nozzles, the blue nozzles inside the cabin here and there. I've got a little like T bracket that I built. You can see the T bracket there. The T bracket gets hose clamped to the dash bar. The other side of the T bracket is gonna get hose clamped where my aluminum dash mounts. Now, the lines for this, I've got Running up, I kept them as high as possible just so they won't get as dirty or kicked by feet. This nice flame resistant covering you put on the ones. Got them running down right here next to each other. The T on the bottle, I've got one going in the top. That goes to my dash. The bottom one goes to the engine bay through this bulkhead right here by my hand. So this is mounted to the floor with little rubber isolator bushings under it. The bushings weren't included, but I just made some. I've routed both of my activators already, so let me show you where those are at. The interior activator, I've opted to mount it up here above our heads. One of the things that I don't necessarily like is it's very hard to reach my dash with how far back I've pushed the seats. And that's reasonably common, especially in like Subaru stuff, Evos, you know, four-door four -door sedan cars where you've pushed the seats back, you've given yourself more leg room, but now the dashboard's real far away. So my switches are going in the ceiling and I wanted this activator to be easy for Calvin and I to reach while we are strapped in. So we can barely touch the dash. And I really didn't want it to be something where like on stage, something crazy happens and I gotta unbuckle to pull the fire extinguisher thing. Like ultimately, if you do pull the fire extinguisher, like you're getting out of the car, right? The car is on fire, but I wanna be able to pull it while we're in the car and before I even have to you know, car starts on fire, pull the thing, then get unbuckled and try to get out. Like, I think that's a better situation than trying to, you know, unbuckle, pull the thing, then get out. 
I don't know, just my head. So I didn't put that in the dash, which is a common place for people to put it. I could have put it right up here in the center. The second emergency fire suppression activator I've placed right here on the cowl of the car. So moving this over, it interferes with my windshield wipers. So this is right here. So if you yank this out, got your big emergency thing, this comes out, fire suppression nozzles go crazy. And you guys have already seen all the nozzles up here in the engine bay. So here, the back, and that side. So that basically completes the fire suppression system. What I wanted to show you as well is Calvin's foot plate and how it just how easy it is to put on. Studs in the firewall, line those up. I'm just gonna set this here. But you can see the fire suppression system back underneath the foot plate. There's plenty of room to reach around over here and pull the pin before the event. There's a pin that keeps the activators from activating. So you'll put that pin in, transport, not racing, the whole deal. Probably put a slick little like remove before flight tag on it so we can pull it off. And maybe put like a little, uh, I like those office lanyard, like retractable things. You can clip them onto stuff and then you pull it out and you let go and it just it pulls it up. Just like your name tag badge, right? So I'll probably get one of those to put on that. So that way it's like impossible to lose it and clip it to something down here so it doesn't run off. The other cool thing is I've got Calvin's buttons here. So if you know what these two buttons are going to be for, drop that down in the comments below. Just imagine... We're full rage rally, Calvin's reading his notes, I'm concentrated on driving. What thing in the car would we need to turn on or off or do that I don't want to get distracted from? And Calvin doesn't want to lose his notes in the passenger seat to have to hit a switch, you know, up in the ceiling that he would want to do with his feet. So I've got two buttons. They are kind of related, but not entirely. So Calvin came out last night and he likes his feet out wide left and right so the buttons are in the middle these are like billet aluminum super tough waterproof buttons so he'll be able to bring his foot over here and hit one and also hit both of them at the same time which would potentially be what we need mid-stage flying down a gravel road so this big aluminum panel I had bent this is 14 gauge aluminum, so it's a little bit thick. It's not quite one eighth of an inch thick, but it's very sturdy, not going to rattle. This panel mounts to the existing dash structure, these old Dodge Colts. The dash structure is actually welded into the car, so you can't remove the dash effectively. So I cut it. This mounts to the top of that. It mounts to the top of what I have left, and what I have left allows me to run the factory defrost vents and even the factory speaker in the center if I wanted to. It's flat pouring outside. So the dash mounts to the top. At the bottom of this, I put these slots in here and I'm gonna hose clamp the dash to the dash bar. So with big worm gear hose clamps, gonna be four of them. And this thing is not gonna go anywhere. In addition, I've mounted my main power kill switch up here in the dash. So Calvin and I can reach this, barely. Just barely we can reach it when you're fully cinched, strapped in. If that's gonna be an issue for us passing tech, I can move it somewhere else, but looking at pictures of other people's cars, their main kill switch is up on their dash, and I know that they're not gonna be able to hit that switch fully strapped into the car. So this is where I've opted to put that. Got the big safety logo here, in addition to the little baby safety logo there. So. I'm tempted to kind of put like a big sticker up here that says emergency fire pole in the ceiling or like fire roof or something just so EMS or first responders know that that's up there. That's really the only problem I see with that being up there out of the way is like, you know, car starts on fire, somebody runs up, maybe they're on the driver's side and they're trying to find this, you know, fire pole, but they go to just look into the window and grab you know, to turn the main power off. And some, sometimes people will also put a main power kill switch out here as well. But I couldn't find a split. I couldn't find a spot in the rules that said you have to, it's required to have two of them. So I've got my main one in the dash, which is typically where the rules say located inside the car, easy to find for first responders with the ability for the driver and co-driver to both reach it. So that's where that's at.
Next on the list is making a big firewall for the rear seat where that went. Now I took all of that old stuff out when I did the new roll cage, so we have to remake all of that. So this is some 16 gauge aluminum, which is a little bit thicker than what most people probably run, but I want to use this sheet, the paneling, that firewall as a bulkhead for my fuel system. And I don't want to try to mount a fuel system bulkhead to a really flimsy piece of aluminum. That just doesn't really make sense to me. So I really want a rigid piece. We're going to get the nibbler. If you've never seen one of these, I'll show it to you in action. This is a nibbler right here. You can see the end of it. That little button looking thing in the middle goes up and down really fast. It has a notch in the side of it, much like the coupler for this little bit here for my drill bit, how that's recessed right there. Imagine that, but super sharp. As that notch goes up and down, it takes little nibbles off of the sheet metal. It's a really good tool for cutting really thin metal, but it does make a huge mess. So it shoots these little half moon looking pieces of aluminum or steel just all out the side of it and they go crazy. So, you know, when you're cutting, don't just point it right at your real nice car in the garage. Make sure you're pointing it like at a trash can or somewhere. Or for me, over here at the other rally car and the rest of my parts to go in the car. If I must say so myself, that's probably the fastest rear firewall that I've ever made ever because that's the only rear firewall that I've ever made ever. And honestly, it only took me about 30 minutes, 35 minutes. So I realized pretty quickly that my cardboard-aided design, CAD, um, was going to be the same pattern from the top and the bottom. So the top was bigger, so I started at the top and use this piece, you know, coming down, which is the piece you saw me put in there first. I had to stop the camera. I, I probably took that piece of panel, both of them, top one and the bottom of them, in and out of there 30 times, just trimming and getting it to fit right. But this gave me at least the template for where my roll bars were at, got the piece in there, left a little bit to still remove, you know, measure twice, cut once, don't cut too much. So I kind of just walked it in slow. Same thing for the bottom, and honestly, I'm pretty happy with the fit. So, like, you know, there's a light gap around here, but that'll slide up just a bit. All of that will get taped shut so that nothing can come through. It's completely sealed. We'll seal the whole deal off, so that'll be sealed. There's a little bit of overlap through the middle and through the sides, which is good. The tape's just kind of sagging because it's clean aluminum, but overall, super stoked with the fitment. So everything will get taped. This deal will get screwed down. We'll glue every all the edges to under the tape so that way just it's completely airtight. The nice part about using this thicker gauge aluminum is that you can see this piece is pretty rigid being 16 gauge. I can put a bulkhead fitting in this and it's the bulkhead is not going to wobble around. So that's probably one of the most important parts about in my head making this firewall is making sure that where my fuel lines come through, we're good. So on a rally car, any FIA car, you are allowed to run your fuel lines inside the cabin. So that's what we're going to be doing on this. I'm only going to have, I think at this point, questionable, I know I got 10 days to figure this out. Pretty sure I'm only going to have a feed line, but I have enough to do a feed and a return. Depends on the pump setup I need to run in that radium engineering fuel cell. The radium cell is set up for fuel injection. I bought it because I can make it work in here and I could get it in time. Like, they shipped it out within three days, the size I wanted and everything. So I got that, but it's set up for EFI. So I've got to un-EFI it, kind of, which I have some parts to do that with, and then ultimately set it up on here. So if I've got to run like a bypass regulator or something, then I'll have a return, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. In addition, the next video, we're going to start doing all the wiring. So you're going to see what those buttons are for. You're going to see the Holly EFI Pro Dash go in. You're going to see the Rally Safe live tracking GPS stuff go in the car. So I'll have a nice little antenna up here, like a Wi Fi antenna in the car, all that stuff. So when you're at those events, 
They can track you. The rally safe is also your emergency signal, so your SOS, all of that stuff. When you show up, they give you the little screen. The screen's in here. If you crash, you hit the SOS button. It lets everybody know you crashed. So that stuff will all be tackled in the next video. In addition to, you know, at some point I got to put the transmission in this thing and try to fire it up. So we got to wire it first. Fuel cell comes in. We do the fuel system. Then we fire the car up. And I got to build an exhaust because I just, I grabbed the old header. And of course, it's cracked in a bunch of places. Hopefully the spare header that I have in the back will fit this engine. And the 2 liter, I think the 2 liter head is different than the 1.6 liter head so I'm pretty sure the header's not gonna work and I'm gonna have to like somehow patch up Sir Rusty over here so because I really I just really don't want to build a new header the week before the rally that would just be less than ideal at least let me try snowdrift first then I'll build the header the next event so maybe we just run old Captain Rusty cracked gnarly header so with that I'm stoked, guys. Making huge progress on the car. Got the dash in, fire suppression system in. Everything's looking good. And I'm just, I'm ready for this thing to be done. And I'm ready for it to be a rally, even though we got, we got a ways to go. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching the videos. Subscribing to the channel. Checking out the YouTube shorts. I've got a TikTok now and Instagram. All the engagement is awesome. I really appreciate it. And I'm excited to take you guys on this rally journey. Building the car. It's just part of it. Ideally, this thing's reliable enough that we just get to enjoy racing rallies all summer. So with that, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Keep it rad. Also, I don't think I showed this earlier, but I engineered this dash panel to fit under the factory. There would have been a dash pad here, like a foam thing, but to fit under the factory little trim piece. So the trim piece actually holds it on. There's studs on this trim piece, and they go down through this dash panel, and they're gonna. This is gonna bolt down like this. So when you look in here, it's not just gonna be like crappy open race car dash with aluminum panel and defrost vents. But it's crazy just how much it like. Becomes a car once you put a dash in there. Peace, guys.